In this video, we're going to talk about how to publish services utilizing destination NAP policies on the Palo Alto. Now, the first question you might come up with is, what is publishing mean? Well, what do I mean by publishing services? Well, traditionally, you would have the internet, and then you would have some sort of a firewall. And then behind there, you would have services, say, on a web server. And so by publishing, what essentially we're doing is we're allowing people on the internet to come through our firewall and access those services. But only those specific services, such as in this case, port 80 and 443, since that's a web server. So that's the idea of publishing. We're making available to the internet. And then with regards to destination NAP policies. In a prior video, we talked about source NAP policies. Basically, uh, see, internal to our organization, these are using private IPs. Uh, private IPs cannot be accessed across the internet. They can only be accessed inside other private IP environments. Whereas out on the internet, we're using public IPs. So in order to get to those private IPs from the public IPs, we have to use some sort of a NAT or network address translation. Because we are coming from the internet into the private location, the destination needs to be NATed, and therefore it is called a destination NAT. All right. Yeah, if that doesn't make too much sense to you, don't worry about it. There's plenty of other things to worry about. So quick review of our environment here. Uh, this is our network environment right here. Uh, we have our management or our servers over here and our DMZ up there. And basically I want to simulate going from the, uh, simulate going from the internet by going from my server environment up. So how I'm gonna do that? First off, we'll ignore the fact that the internet is there and we will, instead of calling the servers, we will call this internet and then what so we're simulating the internet on our server environment so we're just going to rename the existing zone that we have the next thing we're going to do is on the palo alto on this interface right here it currently has an ip address of dot one we're going to add an additional ip address of dot .250. The idea here is that we want our web server to be have its own IP address. So we're gonna just add an additional IP address to that interface, piece of cake to do. And then we want to access the web server off of our DMZ machine. Now that already has a web server on it, so we don't necessarily need to worry about setting that up. What we're going to do with the Palo Alto is we're going to set it up so that when we hit this IP address, it is just routed through the Palo Alto right up to that DMZ server uh, at that IP address directly. Uh, so in order to do this, a couple of steps we need to do. First off, we need to rename our zone. We don't technically need to do this, but in order to look proper, we want to, uh, since we are renaming our server zone to our internet zone. Next thing we need to do is we want to create some address objects. Uh, specifically because, well, we, hey, we have a .250 right there. We have a 50.10 right there. Those mean something to us while we're looking at this diagram, but in like 10 minutes, they won't necessarily mean anything to us. So we want to use named objects instead of IP addresses so that they're descriptive of what they mean. Uh, once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and create a security, security policy. And then create our destination NAT policy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into that. Let's go start off with renaming our zones. So we're on our Palo Alto here, uh, renaming the zones. Well, that's under the network tab. And we're currently on zones. And I can see right now uh, it's currently named inside. I want to rename that. So I'm just going to click on it and let's call this uh, public internet. All right, 
So now when I look at my interfaces, I'll see that I have my interface 1-2 is in the public internet zone, just so that we can have keep track of it. Uh, the destination machine, the server that, that we want to access is still in the DMZ, so we're just going to leave that as is. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to create some address objects uh, because I want to make sure that I understand exactly what those are in the future. To do that, I come up to the Objects tab, and then on the left-hand side, click Addresses, and then Add. Here, I can give it a descriptive name. Uh, for instance, uh, we'll start off with the DMZ server, so I'll say DMZ, uh, DMZ Web Server. And the DMZ Web Server's IP address, 192.168. 50.10 and let me look back at my diagram just to make sure 50.10 yes okay never hurts to look at it a second time all right next one I want to do is I want to create another object here called uh, internet and I'll just call this internet web server it could be a little bit more descriptive, but the idea here is that internet is the zone that I'm I'm in, and then web server is the service. I probably in a business environment would call this like web server five or you know whatever application that's servicing. And then the IP address is 192.168.1.250. One dot two fifty. That's what I said. Okay. And okay. All right, so I've created my objects. Now I need to go ahead and create my policies. So for that, I go to my policies tab and I went ahead and I deleted all of my existing policies in here uh, just to make sure that nothing else was in my way. So now I want to create my first, my security policy. So again, I'll come up to add, and let's go ahead and call this uh, publish web server. <coughs> and click on the source tab. Now the source, uh, if you're coming from the internet, you know the, the source is where people are coming from. Uh, in this case, they're coming from the internet. So I would click add, and I'll choose my public internet. Again, this is a simulated internet, but we're trying to make it as realistic as possible. We then go to the destination tab, and the destination in this case, in this case is going to be the DMZ, and we need to specify a specific destination address, which is going to be, and this will look a little weird, the uh, internet web address. So even though we're saying that the destination zone is the DMZ. We're saying that the IP address for the destination is the internet. I know, two completely different zones. The internet web is on the internet zone, whereas the DMZ is on the DMZ zone. Just document it, keep going forward. Trust me, it confuses me as well. Uh, applications, we want to specify the applications. Uh, so we'll come in here and we will choose web-browsing is the name for HTTP. I will also specify SSL, which is the name for HTTPS. And just for troubleshooting cases, I will add in ping. Ping is not always the best and most secure item to include, but for troubleshooting purposes, it makes sense. Uh, actions allow, perfect. All right, so that is our security zone. It was a little weird when we're talking over here as far as our destination, but uh, hopefully it makes sense otherwise. Next thing we not want to do is configure NAT. Actually, let's go ahead and commit that, and let's confirm that NAT is actually needed. So while that's committing, I'm going to open up two different command prompts here. 
Uh, first one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ping the DMZ server. So ping 192.168.50.10. I'm going to do that with a ping-t just to confirm that we are not routing to the DMZ zone. And then ping-t 192.168.1.250, which is going to be the public IP that we're publishing to. All right, so both of those are timing out. So we created the security zone, the, or sorry, the security policy. Security policy allows traffic to go through, but as we see, we're currently not getting any traffic through because we're not natting yet. So say okay. Now we'll create our nat policy. So the nat policy is where all the magic happens. Go ahead and click add. Again, give it a descriptive name, publish web server. The original packet. Well, the original packet is coming from a specific zone, in which case it is the internet zone. The destination, remember we are hitting the destination IP. Oof, getting a whole lot of drawing error. We are hitting that IP address right there with the dot 250. That is on my simulated internet zone. Therefore, the destination zone is going to be the internet. So internet. And then the destination interface. Well, the interface, the internet is on interface one dash two. And then the destination address for this packet right here is going to be my internet web server. So again, all these addresses, all these locations are on the internet. We then go up to translated packets. Previously, we talked about a source address translation. Now we are doing a destination address translation. So we want to click and we want to select a static IP address. And the translated IP that we want is going to be the DMZ web server. We want to translate it to the, D to the DMZ address space. And then we say, okay. Now, if I minimize this a little bit, let's get our pings to be visible. And then go ahead and commit those changes. As this starts to commit through, our pings should, at least for one of those, the pings should start responding. And there we go. We now see that we are getting a response from 192.168.1.250. That's the address that is being translated into the DMZ. And if we open up a web browser and we hit that new IP address, we should get a web page. So there you go. There's an example of publishing a service to the internet. We didn't have necessarily a client on the internet, so we couldn't fully test this properly. Um, but we simulated the internet connection internally, and then we published that those specific ports or services to our simulated internet zone.